How's it folks? The Winter Tales and patch 1.14 has just been released for Dying Light 2 and there is a lot of good stuff added in this update. I'm going to start with the event first and then move on to the patch details as the event is time sensitive but there will be chapter marks if you wish to look for specific info. So a quick rundown of the event is that Winter has arrived alongside some naughty elves and it's your job to take them out and steal their presents and sweets from them. Bucky is back as well and doing bounties and leveling up your rank with him gives you one letter per rank. You post that letter to Santa and he flies overhead in a plane that may remind players of the airdrops from Dying Light 1. If you head to the airdrop, you will find it protected by Uncle Snow and a couple of other infected. After dealing with them, you get some more presents including gear that is unique to the event and it will change each week. Also, don't sell off the pole stars that you get each airdrop as you will need 20 to unlock the final transformation for the tree that you need to decorate. I would recommend doing the first and third weekly bounties for Baka and leaving the second one for later as it involves securing 5 airdrops and you need levels to be able to call in the airdrops. Also the smaller bounties asking you to look for feast items can be found in fridges or for second stores that would have sold food items. For example, the one just along the main street from the bazaar. If you are looking for the Christmas bolter, then one spawns behind the truck, behind the metro tunnel fast travel point near the bazaar. And if you are trying to get presents or rack up kills involving the event themed infected, then I would recommend finding a howler and let it scream to keep the virals coming. As the event virals are the short little things that took me by surprise because I wasn't used to looking down while being swarmed. The new pole arm is very effective at sweeping up these little blotters. Head on over to the Huntress to pick up one if you want to try out. Also after completing the airdrop you should notice you get an XP buff. So take advantage of that and do some farming after each airdrop to get some extra XP. Other than that the event itself is fairly straightforward. The participation goal involves finding one winter present and rewards you with 800 sweets that you can spend at Baka. The personal goal asks you to collect 60 presents and rewards you with the Dead of Winter Bow Blueprint and the Deep Freeze Arrow Blueprint that you need for this bow. This is pretty handy for completing the bounties involving defeating infected after freezing them and of course it is useful in stun locking infected as well. The global goal wants us to collect 9 million presents collectively and will reward us with the Gingerbread Infected Charm. This charm has the ability to customize the look of our weapons so I'm hoping we will be able to reach the global goal. Then of course there is the Grim Santa bundle added to the Dying Light store. Also don't forget that the Hakon bundle is now free to keep if you claim it while the event is active. Alongside that there is a significant amount of the bundles in the Dying Light store that are discounted. So if you had your eye on one of them you could decide if it is now worth it for you. And if you head on over to the Pilgrim Outpost, the Nutcracker set is available if you have the tokens for it. Overall, I have been pretty impressed with the event and the added snow and effects without a performance decrease is a nice bonus. I would probably rate this one above the Halloween event at the stage. Of course, other than the winter event, patch 1.14 added in a lot of new stuff that is worth talking about. So let's get straight into starting with probably my favorite additions of the two new weapon types. Firstly the pole arms. I have only been able to try out the one that I bought from the Huntress in this brief moment but it has quickly climbed to one of my favorite weapon types. Its standard light attack is a sweeping motion that is very effective against group of enemies and it is especially effective if you want to farm virals for this event as aiming low and sweeping their legs from the big infected as well as taking care of the little guys is a lot of fun. On top of its strong basic moveset, its strong attack involves a lunge allowing you to take care of infected well outside the normal range of melee weapons, which can be useful against the poison cloud zombies or poking the feet of volatiles from outside the narrow entrances. The other new weapon type involves the newly added nocturnal weapons. From what I currently know, there are 9 versions at the moment. They are the paper cutter, fire station great axe, pyramid blade, Proletarian, Mohawk Hammer, Police Stick, Hartek, Root Stick, and the Buccaneer. 
They are only available as unique to exotic grade and they come with special affixes that are triggered during the night and drain your immunity meter as compensation. They also glow in the dark, which is kind of cool. You can get them in a few different ways, such as by participating in night encounters, fighting volatiles, backpack biters, visiting Harper, which you need to be rank 35 to buy them, or getting a random one from the Pilgrim Outpost. I only have five of them at the moment, but they have strong bonuses to fight in specially infected, such as demolishers and volatiles, but perhaps my favorite is one that has a 59% XP increase when killing infected at night, which should make farming legend levels significantly shorter and more efficient. This patch also introduced two new throwing weapons, the first being an explosive knife that you can buy the blueprint from the PK main base on the ship, the second being throwing stars that you can buy from the craftmaster at the bazaar. I personally prefer the throwing knife as it is also attachable so you can use it as a distraction or even stun a demolisher when it's gathering up its rock or nowadays a big snowball to throw at us seeing as we can no longer block that. They have also added new enemy variants. Starting off with there are now three new gas tank barter variants. Firstly the toxic one will release a deadly cloud of toxic gas around itself. The second one involves a freezing barter that could stop enemies whenever you want them to as long as you're not too close. And finally there's an incinerating barter that throws fire puddles around him so make sure to keep your distance unless you want to warm up a bit. Virals have also turned more vicious as some of them will spit in your direction so keep away. They generally look like they're wearing a dark gas tank suit without the actual gas tank. And then there's also a new goon variant that will scream to alert banshees that can attack us. They have also added two new finishers with your hands while fist fighting and made it possible to perform a finisher after successfully performing a perfect dodge, perfect parry, x-ray attack, and even when you release yourself from a barter grab. They have also made changes to New Game Plus and the Night Runner tools. Now, if you start a New Game Plus, you will take your Night Runner tools with you, but they won't be available for certain early story missions to prevent the game breaking, but you should receive a warning about that specifically. Otherwise, the Night Runner tools will be available whenever you are free roaming in the open world in a new game plus save now. Other than those highlights, I'm now going to go through the nitty gritty details of patch 1.14 starting with the PS4, PS5 cross save integration. If you play the previous generation, your save will travel with you onto the next one and your progress comes along for the ride, although there is a minor asterisk along with that. Cross-gen transfer save will not transfer, can't touch this, lightning reflexes and DLC trophies automatically. To have them with you on the new console, you have to follow the additional steps. Open your PS4 version of the game and install the latest update. Change an option in your profile, can be any change of video or audio options in the main menu. Turn off the game on the PS4 and download the update on the PS5. Use save transfer functionality and this should ensure you get all your trophies. And then there's also some gameplay changes for PC. Players can now choose another key to bind the expert grappling hook. We adjusted correct charm to 40% damage buff at 25% of weapon durability. Fixed an issue where skull face will remain idle. Fixed issue when objective marker displays improper information. Fixed an issue where players could lure infected into Stammer's room. Carnage Manica Shield Blueprint is accessible from the vendor and the Manica can now be dismantled. Added new visual and audio effects showing elemental damage affecting the player. Adjusted Knuckle Duster's attack animation to look more natural. And then some co-op changes. Fixed issue when Steam players couldn't join players that were using the Epic Games launcher. Fixed issue when Epic players couldn't join Steam players. Fixed the issue when the game crashed after joining co-op session. Fixed an issue when the objective disappeared after a short time after starting the generator in the Bridge the Gap mission. Fixed an issue when some infected could be seen walking in the air by the host in Bridge the Gap mission. Fixed an issue when the objective won't progress after killing all enemies. Fixed an issue where volatiles could ignore flashlights. And then some dev tool changes. Over 600 whole rate assets are added to the dev tools library and implementation of LODs. Couple of UI changes, fixed an issue where an unknown key appeared in the tutorial when toggle crouch was turned off. 
fixed an issue where challenge weapon had a red background icon and was shown as worn out in certain challenges, implemented cosmetic changes to the tooltip in the inventory UR. And then finally, some technical changes, fixed issue with improper lighting on howlers when they were standing in the sunlight, updated animations for various aspects of the game, including cutscenes, NPC animations and more, with re mocap involved, fixed issue with invisible collisions during Kill the Renegade's objective, fixed infected noises, fixed game crash after performing a quick resume, fixed graphical issue after entering the hospital, fixed issue for not getting trophies related to map activities, fixed volatile AR and patrolling routes near the VNC tower, highway and hills, fixed an issue with when GRE aberrations could be one shot in spawning animations, fixed cricket bat icon during challenges, fixed opera machete balancing, fixed VFX during the fights in the opera arena, fixed an issue where a player could get stuck between textures, fixed issue where AR was not reacting to players, fixed an issue where the camera clips through the Kensai outfit when healing, fixed an issue where the mission cancel title does not appear after cancelling the mission, fixed visual effect of torches at the opera building entrance, fixed sound when players are under the influence of ongoing elemental damage, fixed an issue where players could get stuck on top of the ceiling near the bazaar entrance, fixed an issue where cricket bat, scrapper hammer or buccaneer failed to appear in the weapons wheel, fixed gaps between buildings in the city, fixed an issue where the map was blurred and shook while being affected by the howler scream, fixed an issue where a dot indication of a new item reappears on all items in the stash, fixed an issue where the trophy into the unknown was not chained to the rest of the main quest, fixed an issue where the camera would jitter while opening certain doors in a dark hollow zone, fixed an issue where players were able to cut the enemy in half with knives, improved far jump animation making it more immersive. And that's pretty much all the changes for patch 1.14. I will have a couple more videos out in the future regarding some of these changes in more detail. Other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic time with this event. Take care and cheers for now.